there, my name is Allie, aka Buttonhead, and today I'm going to show you how to design a button in Photoshop. This technique can be applied to any of the products made with the Tecra brand button equipment, including button pins, magnets, pocket mirrors, etc. So, whether you are a Buttonhead customer looking to design and submit your artwork to me, or if you are just a budding button designer, this tutorial will help cover the basics of how to take your concept from design to print. To get started, you will first need to download my button templates and you can find the link to do so in the description of this video. On my website, I have downloadable templates for all of the product sizes that I offer. Now, do you absolutely have to use the templates to design a button? No. But, unless you are a professional designer, I recommend using these templates to ensure that your final result is a correctly aligned print graphic. Second, you will need a copy of Photoshop to open and work with these files. Photoshop Elements or any version of CS will do. Unfortunately, other light programs such as MS Paint or GIMP are not really going to accomplish what you need here. If you are a pro designer, you can create and size a design outside of Photoshop using Illustrator or Corel. The exact dimensions of the templates can be found in the text file included with each download. But again, unless you are a professional designer, these templates are going to be the quickest and easiest way for you to get started. When you have finished downloading the design templates, unzip the folder and you will notice a series of files inside. A PSD design template, a PSD page template, a text instructions file, and at the time of this recording, there is also a step-by-step -step photo image tutorial. Let's open up the Buttonhead design template and see what we've got. The first thing you will notice is that the design template is divided into three circles, the inner circle, the middle circle, and the outer circle. The inner circle represents the face of your button. This is where the main part of your design will be located. The middle circle represents the visible edge of the button item. When the button is held on its side, this area will be fully visible. The button edge is a great place to include text such as your business name and your web address. The outer circle is a bleed area, and it is critical to production. Although any part of your design that falls into this outer circle will not be visible on the final button, it should be consistent with your overall design, so please don't ignore it. Before we start designing, let's take a quick look at the Layers panel in Photoshop to view all of the important layers that make up this design template. The top three layers are only text layers that explain what we just talked about, so we'll turn those off right away. We're going to leave the button edge and text optional layers on for now because we will use them later. The Guidelines layer is exactly that, it's just a guide. We'll keep it on while we're designing, but we will be turning it off in the end. The Background layer is the full background of our design. If your final design will have a white background, the four white backgrounds layer should be turned on to create a crop line around the graphic. Why? Well, our final designs will be printed on regular white print paper, so this gray area around the outer circle will make it stand out on the white paper and allow us to see where we will need to cut the button graphic. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. In the Layers panel, click on and highlight the background layer. Now you can add color, text, images to the background, anything your heart desires, but here's a tip. When in doubt, simplify. The best designs are clear and concise. Always keep the size of your final item in mind. Design ideas are big, but buttons can be small. It's also a good idea to let purpose guide the design process. What will the final item be used for? If it's a promotional event, what information do you need to emphasize? If it's a gift, is it appropriate to add your text contact information? Consider the audience first and foremost. The best keepsake is one everyone will want to keep. Also, if you're a novice designer, there are two web articles I have written that I strongly recommend checking out. The first is titled, Image Resolution, Print Size, and Print Quality. This article briefly explains the basics about image resolution, how it affects print size, and what you can do to ensure the best possible quality of your print images. The second article is titled, Digital Print Color Management. 
It explains the differences between screen and print color because there are some big differences. It also discusses printing processes and offers solutions on how to manage your workflow to get the best possible print color result. The links to both of these important articles can be found in the description of this video. I'm going to add my business logo to the background layer of our design template. For this design, I'd like to have the logo on the face of the button with a bit of white space around the edges. If I wanted no white space, I could stretch my image all the way out for a full bleed, or just into the inner and middle circles and create a color bleed for the outer circle just to keep it consistent. Now, let's add some wraparound text. This text will not appear on the face of the button, only on the side. It's just a nice option for including promotional text. If you don't want to use it, you can just turn those layers off in the layer panel. Okay, we're almost done with our button design. Let's finish it up. Since this image is on a white background, let's turn on the four white backgrounds layer in the layers panel. If you don't have a white background, there's no need to turn it on. Finally, and very importantly, we need to turn off the guidelines layer. We don't want those to print on our final design. And now our button design is finished. Creation or setup of one design is included with every button head order, so if you are placing an order with me, you're all done. You can place your order and send the file to me directly, or you can upload it to my website. If you are placing an order with me and you'd like to use more than one design, you can use as many different button designs as you want for your order, but they all have to be 100% print ready, and that's where the page template comes in. So let's open up our page template. Really, this file is just a layout for an 8.5 by 11 standard piece of paper. If you have extras turned on in your version of Photoshop, the page template file has guidelines to show you where the margins are and, most importantly, where you will place your individual button designs to create the print page. Again, you are setting this up just as if you were going to print these button designs out for yourself on your home printer. So just copy your individual design and paste it into the page template. And just keep pasting until the number of designs you have on the page matches the number of items in your order. If you need 10 buttons of one design, paste that design 10 times and position them within the guides. Then if you need 5 buttons of another design, paste that one 5 times and position it within the guides. If your final order is for 100 buttons, your end result will be one or more of these page templates with 100 designs pasted. Depending on the size of the items you're ordering, only a limited number will fit onto one page, of course, so create and save multiple page templates files to suit your order. The last step in the design process is to save and zip the files. Before we do, let's look one more time at the Layers panel, and we'll notice that each of these button designs has created a new layer on the page template. Let's just go ahead and merge all of these layers. That's going to give us a much smaller file, and it will be quicker to zip and quicker to upload. Now let's save our file. If you are planning to place a button head order, and I hope you do, now all you have to do is zip your files to compress them, which makes them smaller and easier to send. I'm including a link in the description of this video to some more information on how to zip your files if you need a tutorial. Once your files are zipped, you can head over to my website to place your order. When your order is placed, you can upload your file to my website, your files and your order are typically reviewed within one working day. Please note, for security reasons, only files that are associated with an order will be reviewed. So, it's very important that you place your order before using my upload tool. Files that are uploaded without an order will not be reviewed. So there you have it! I hope you found this tutorial helpful and inspiring. Please be sure to read the additional resources I have included in the description of this video, then feel free to leave your comments, questions, and share this video as well. You can also visit my website to see all of the cool stuff I'm making and find out what's new in the world of Buttonhead. Thanks for watching! I'm looking forward to seeing your designs!